I want to introduce our next speaker, Leslie Malley, to speak with you about advocacy. Thank you. Leslie? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm glad to be here with you today. Um, my name is Leslie Malley, as Cheryl said. I am with the National Indian Council on Aging. I am the CSEP Compliance Manager. And today I'm going to take you through a short but informative um, presentation on advocacy. It is labeled Take Action and it's Advocacy 101. Next slide, please. What is advocacy? Advocacy is defined as any action that speaks in favor of, recommends, argues for a cause, supports or defends, or pleads on behalf of, behalf of others. In, in the most basic sense, advocacy is speaking up about something you believe in in hopes of improving a situation for yourself or others. Next slide, please. How to get involved in advocacy. When is the right time to get involved with tribal, local, state, and federal issues that affect your community? The answer is now. There are many ways in which your voice can be heard. They say all politics are local. Begin by researching who represents your area, attend tribal council or town hall meetings to find out what topics are being discussed. Register to vote. All of these actions can become reactions and assist your cause. Um, in the next slides, we will find more information on how to get involved in your community to make a difference. Next slide, please. Register to vote. Um, very important. Um, the importance of your vote and your voice is enormous. It is one of the ways we can contribute to the change that we want to see in the world. Um, past elections have shown us that the United States voter turnout is in fact low. And as Jacqueline said earlier, um, there are a lot of um, barriers um, for those living on reservations and in rural areas. This could be why our voter turnout is low. Um, we have a lot of things um, to do, so it's kind of hard to set aside time to go stand in long lines to vote. Um, but it's very important, so it's good to have a voting strategy. Plan ahead. Um, there's a few questions you can ask yourself. What do I need to register to vote? Can I vote early? Can I vote by mail? Do I have to be registered with a political party to vote? Um, is identification required? Preparation is key to have a successful vote. One place you can go is the Fair Election Center. This offers an annual updated guide to each state's voting laws. Uh, it's a great resource for you, your family, and friends to stay inform informed. Next slide, please. This is what the website looks like. Um, if you go there, you can click on your state and it will give you information including registration deadlines and election dates official election websites, what types of IDs you need to register and vote, where do you vote, how can you vote, and it does have a section for common questions. Next slide, please. Another way um, that we can ensure our advocacy um, efforts are going good is to stay informed. Uh, research is very important. It keeps us educated and informed. It may take time for you to do so, um, but it's well worth the effort. There are several informative websites that can get you started on the right track. Um, I have a few listed below, um, and you know, another great resource is a local or national newspaper. Um, you can find a lot of information in those. Um, Congress.gov is the official website for the U.S. Federal Legislative Information. It provides access to accurate, timely, and complete legislative information for members of Congress, agencies, and the public. Um, the Native American Rights Fund, they have a great website um, since 1970. They have been providing legal assistance to Indian tribes, or nations, organizations, and individuals nationwide. Um, the National Congress of American Indians, um, NCAI has a great get involved section this is a page um, on advocate, advocating for Indian country. Um, you can also become a member there to get updates and stay informed. Um, the Pew Research Center is a nonpartisan fact tank that informs the public about issues, attitudes, and trends. trends. Um, and it is, um, they don't take any policy positions, so it's just a nice place to kind of see where the country's at. 
Um, another great resource that we learned about today is AARP. You definitely want to check out their website. Next slide, please. You'll want to also research your tribal, federal, state, and local elected officials. It is important to know where they stand on topics that are, you are passionate about. Issues um, and solutions can begin locally. Given the right attention and support, these issues can gain state and federal attention. Uh, many issues right now deal within the following categories. Citizenship, community sovereignty, social issues, domestic policy issues, economic issues, immigration issues, electoral issues, healthcare issues, education issues, and of course, environmental issues. Next slide, please. To find out who um, your tribal um, leaders are, um, the chief executive of a tribe is generally called tribal chairperson, principal chief, governor, or president. If you go to um, the website below, it's the BIA.gov, you can find a directory. Um, if you use the search function, you can pull up contact information. Next slide, please. At the federal level, um, you can go to um, live.sierradata.com. You get to this website and you enter your address. It will pull up your local, state, and federal representatives. Um, at the federal level, or national level, you have three main legislators, two senators and one representative. Every state has two senators who represent all people of their state, regardless of their geographic area. Representatives serve based on geographic area called their district. You have one representative at the national level. Next slide, please. For your state representatives, you can go to the same uh, website and it will pull up all of your, your representatives. And at the state level, you have one state senator and one state representative. Unlike the national representative, both state senators and state representatives serve based on your geographic area or your district. Next slide, please. At the local level, there are many different elected officials who may have influence over specific issues and policies. Depending on where you live and what you're interested in, advocating about some of the most relevant local elected officials may be tribal leadership, the mayor, members of city council, members of the school board, or the district attorney. Next slide, please. This is um, the tribal leaders directory at the BIA.gov. Um, it's really user friendly. You can put your location in and it'll bring up um, your, rep your tribal representation. And then you can click on that to get more information. Next slide, please. This is the live.cero data website. Um, it does have a lot of information. I tried to just give you an example here. Um, once you put in your address, it will give you your local, state, and national representatives. Once you click, you can click on the person. It'll give you their contact information, their web um, address, their Facebook, their Twitter, their physical address, their phone number. Um, for contact purposes that we'll speak about a little later on. And it does that for local, state, and national. Next slide, please. The most important part of advocacy is using your voice. There are many ways to do this that are equally effective. Organization is key in this process to obtain the full amount of attention your voice is projecting. Have a clear goal in mind and a plan of how to achieve it. Focus your message. Public messaging is crucial to political action. A clear, specific message usually works best. There are different ways to communicate with the people who will listen. Here are a few examples. So you can attend a tribal council meeting, attend a town hall meeting, make phone calls, write emails. You can also form a focus group with people of like mind. Next slide, please. Preparation. Good preparation is important in effective advocacy. Below are some examples of preparation and how to get started. Information is power. The more you educate yourself on topics and policies you want to speak on, the better you can present your thoughts, ideas, concerns, and questions to the appropriate person. 
have a specific goal in mind. Sometimes goals can be broadly stated, but goals can also be much more specific. Try to be as specific as possible about what you want to achieve and if possible, what specific actions you would like to see happen. Identify key issues. When you can clearly identify problems or barriers that exist, you can focus your advocacy on what needs to be addressed. Identify solutions. Solutions may not always be easily identified. Communication and conversation with others can lead to solutions that will help your advocacy effort. Identify allies. These are power, there are power in numbers. Talk with your family and friends and neighbors. Identify those willing to attend meetings with you. Remember, being a good advocate does not mean that you must go at it alone. Identify individuals you need to contact. Um, these are the individuals who have the authority and ability to make decisions based on feedback from the community. The individuals are your tribal leadership, local representation, representatives, and state representatives. If there is a policy that is hanging in the balance at the federal level, contact your legislators. Next slide, please. Communication is really important. Effective advocacy requires good communication. Communication can take many forms, including phone calls, face-to-face -face meetings, letters, and emails. Be clear and concrete. Make sure that the message or request is stated clearly. It should also be brief and to the point. Often we want to include everything that revolves around the issues. However, if we add too much information, we can become sidetracked on other issues that may not be as important as the topic at hand. Be assertive. When you communicate with others, they will need to understand that you have goals that you wish to achieve. Talk firm but not harsh. Stand tall and use eye contact. Remember, assertive communication is not aggressive communication. Listen to others. Listening is a simple way to respectfully communicate with others. It means that you are open to listening to their point of view. When others are speaking, do not interrupt the thought, let them finish, and then you can assertively state your thoughts on the matter. Ask questions. If you hear something that is not clear to you, ask questions. Asking questions may be a good way to get valuable information that will ultimately assist your advocacy effort. Asking questions may be a good segue into forming relationships with individuals who may be able to help you, those that are in the position to make decisions. Use visual communication. When speaking to someone about a cause that has directly impacted your life or the life of someone you know, put this into a story. Make it personal. This shows a different perspective that others may not have caught on to at first. You can then share your examples of how a situation can be improved. Next slide, please. Documentation. Keeping notes of your progress can be very helpful in your advocacy efforts. Keeping a notebook. Document your efforts is a good way to stay organized. You will want to write down dates, names, and titles, contact information, and topics discussed and or outcomes for each person you meet with. You may need this for reference during follow-up. Also keep files. If you have correspondence that you receive, whether it's positive or negative in terms of your cause, keep all documentation readily available. You may need this in the future as well. Getting verbal acknowledgement is good feeling. If you can obtain that information in writing, this is better. Next slide, please. And follow up. Often when we advocate for any policy or topic, it does not provide immediate results. The policies you want changed may need some time and attention for months or even years. Some situations require persistence and effort to achieve success. Do not get frustrated. Continue to follow up until, the, until you feel you've been heard. Um, connect with others. If you are going at this alone, involve others. Communication is a key factor and can create power in numbers. Compromise. Sometimes advocacy is about negotiation. What are things that you are willing to compromise on or settle for if you cannot get what you want or need? The next best solution can be better than no solution at all. Next slide, please. And thank you so much. I've enjoyed speaking to you today. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you so much, Leslie. Um, just a reminder, you can put your questions in the Q&A um, bubble or even in the chat.
for getting comments. Uh, great job, and they appreciate your presentation. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Leslie. We really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to thank you once again for your time today, and I would like to hand it back to Mr. Larry Kelly, my COA Executive Director. Thank you.